This famous stock market short seller is back at it again. We're going to talk about what they have to say about this one company. We look at the fear and greed index today. It's sitting at 72. Are we going to be able to make it all the way back into extreme greed territory? Now, we look at how the indices fared across the board. The Dow was up 126 points. The Nasdaq was up 259 points. And the S&P 500 up 55.19 with the Russell 2000 being up. 0.14. Now, if you felt like today was overwhelmingly bullish, look at advancing issues versus declining. There was only 51.1% of issues advancing on the day. Then we come over and look at the sectors across the board today, technology leading the way. However, energy absolutely getting decimated. And it all started with technology yesterday. And what I mean by that was NVIDIA yesterday kept running, running, running on up. And today, NVIDIA, go ahead and smash in our ABC target projection at 132.99. Now, keep in mind, there's still a larger ABC pattern in play with NVIDIA all the way up here towards 141.27. However, are we going to see a small pullback in the near term and form maybe another ABC pattern to go ahead and bring us up towards that higher ABC pattern to the upside? And we talked about energy getting smoked today and energy today forming a bearish engulfing candle already crushed our ABC projections to the upside and to the downside. We've been talking about this target right here. This prior swing point should act as a target on the way back down at about 72.43. However, today we were able to come fairly close. We missed it by a few ticks or so, and then we started to rally back up. So is this the start of another ABC pattern on the way up? We need to pay very close attention to crude oil. For instance, when we look at this on the five minute chart, Pay attention to this candle right here. This happens at about 105 this afternoon. And if you'll notice, this candle right here is also at 105. This is for the S&P 500. They have an inverse correlation. It's very, very important. Now, why is it so important? Now, anytime recently, near term with everything going on in the Middle East, we see crude oil starting to spike and we see the indices going down, that's a clue that maybe there's more tensions going on in the Middle East. We look at the volatility index, look at 105. The VIX was already starting to go up before it got that big candle at 105 on the way up. So again, the VIX picked it up a little bit earlier. So when we see the VIX going up, S&P going down and crude oil going up, that is problematic. And this was all about a news story that came out and said that Israel may be considering going after Iran's oil fields. And that's not really anything new. But again, when they came out and talked about it today, it spooked the market a little bit. Now, tomorrow, we got to worry about, should we be fearful of what Powell has to say? And what I mean by that is the FOMC meeting minutes and not really Powell specific, but all the other members of the FOMC committee. And we're going to learn about what they had to say at 2 p.m. But I don't think this is going to be a big move, market moving event. I think it's going to be a little blip. And that's about it. Tomorrow, we do have the 10-year bond auction at 101. And then 1030, we have crude oil inventory numbers as well. So maybe we'll see some more sparks flying up with crude oil tomorrow, maybe trying to get the rally back underway. However, when we come over and we look at this article right here, Hindenburg Research shorts Roblox alleging inflated metrics. Now, we come back over and we look at a chart of Roblox real quick. On the daily chart, it's already been going down. And now we get that little bit of a cascading effect on the downside. However, this morning when that news came out, we can see it had a gap lower. And on the 30-minute chart, you can see this a little bit clearer. We gapped down, and, it, and throughout the day, we're working on coming back and essentially filling the gap. Now, a rising market, we will see that you know stocks that tend to gap down will, will have a little bit of extra help to be lifted back up. Now, are we out of the woods today? And what I mean by that is we come over and we look at the Dow Jones, for instance. Today, we're still stuck within this upper-level consolidation. We basically have an inside day. The, high, the low of today's candle was higher than the low from the prior day. The high of today's candle was lower than the high from the prior day. But when we look at this, let's say on a one hour chart, what do we see? Not a whole lot. MACD indicator is kind of by the zero line. It looks like it may want to turn up just a bit. Then out here on the 30 minute chart, MACD indicator does have a bullish cross, but keep in mind, all right, this is nothing more than an inside day. And here is a minus development area that we talked about in the first 30 minutes of today's live stream. If you guys want to make sure you don't miss the next live stream, make sure you're subscribed and you have the bell notifications turned on for all. But essentially, we came up there, rejected back down. The second time, boom, we pushed up and out. And that's something that we talk about all the time on the live streams with the structure breakdown points in the minus development areas. Now, if you look at today, I'm going to be looking, you know, tonight, 
I'm gonna be looking for this area tomorrow to come back and get auction. This little minus development area, anywhere from about 420.60 down to about 420.44. If we can get above today's high, then I'm gonna be more inclined to think that we're gonna make our way back up towards that point of control at about 422. Now, as we come over real quick and we take a look at the IWM, the small caps, what do we see? Basically an inside day. The high is lower than the previous day's high. The low is higher than the previous day's low and the high is lower than the previous day's high. So what do we expect? Tomorrow is likely gonna be a breakout or breakdown from this pattern. We look at this out here on the 30 minute chart. What do we see? Well, we see we came down, we filled the gap yesterday, but today nothing more than inside day. Basically we went from below value area low, rotated all the way up to value area high, and then we started to rotate back down and we can see after hours, we're down just a little bit more. Time is running out to take advantage of Apex's massive 80% sale across all their evaluation accounts, passing as little as one day, $35 reset fees, and even better, $85 activation fee across all account sizes. If you guys would like to take advantage of this offer, use the link in the description box down below. Use promo code Mike at checkout. Now we come over and we look at, let's say the QQQs real quick. Again, the Qs today had a very strong push thanks in part to NVIDIA out there. And when we look at this on the daily, MACD indicator kind of flat, and we're trying to basically build out this little minus development here. Now, if we do start to get a strong push tomorrow, watch for this high volume note at about 496.30 to potentially come back and get tested. However, is there a chance that we're gonna have a bearish undertone throughout this week? And if we look at this stat, that's what this stat basically goes on the show, is that anytime from January through September, the market has been up 10% or more. We look at the dates between October 7th through October 15th. Notice over the last 14 occurrences, only four of those weeks have been up, the other 10 have been down. Now, Monday, we did start off bearish. Today, we essentially were able to undo a lot of that bearishness out there. Then we look over here on the four hour chart. What do we see? MACD indicator trying to get across back up, but still we're stuck in this upper level consolidation. And my eyes are still focused on that gap from the FOMC day. We look at the one hour chart and we see the MACD indicator is bullish on that time frame. Then on the 30 minute chart, MACD indicator has a good separation of the lines. Notice this morning, we're able to gap right above this minus development area. So again, that area has come back and been auctioned. Then today we close slightly above value area high and today, right now after hours, we're already below that price point. So is essentially basically overthrow in this little area up here. And now we're gonna work our way back down. Well, for that, let's go over and look at the four hour chart in the futures markets real quick. You can see NASDAQ futures made a new weekly high, meaning we were able to take out the high, which we formed on Sunday night. And we did that without going all the way below value area low. So we had a rotation on the way down, we reversed. And once we got back above, let's say 20,142, it was green lights to go ahead and go higher. But now we've had one, two, three, four consecutive up candles in a row. In the last two candles, we do have a little bit of a wick on each of those candles. As we dive down and we look out here on the daily profiles today, we had a 427 point range. And as we're looking at this, one of the areas we were talking about when we start to see a little bit of a sell off, the market should come back and re-auction this minus development area over here to the downside. Notice value area high is gonna come in at 20,329.50. The point of control will come in at 20,233.50 with value area low being down here at 20,109.00. Now, how do I wanna play this? Well, tonight I am gonna be focused on seeing if we can get a retracement down towards this point of control. And again, we'll talk a little bit about that tonight during the live stream, but this is gonna be one of the targets I will be focused on. And this week, I do lean a little bit more bearish than bullish. However, if you guys join me during the live streams during the New York session, you guys will see, I take both long and shorts. I'm not biased one way or the other like a lot of people may believe. Now, when we look at the SPY, we see upper level consolidation and we have all time highs right over here. We're almost sitting at all time highs. We look out here on the four hour chart. What do we see? MACD indicator trying to make its way back up. And now we're at the upper end of the range. When we come over here and we look at the one hour chart, MACD indicator does have a bullish cross. And on the 30 minute chart, we have a smooth cross with a good separation of the two lines at about a 45 degree angle all the way up. Now here's where some of the problems starts to come in from today. The last 30 minute candle, kind of a little bit of a bearish candle. You can see the market opened up down here. We pushed up came back down and we did close with a green body on the candle, but sellers were present near the highs and smacked it back down just a bit. Now we look at this tomorrow, tomorrow I will be expecting this point of control to come back and get tested. And we're going to see how deep of a retracement 
do we come down for the S&P 500? We look out here on the four hour chart for the futures markets. Notice we came right back near the swing point over here. And similar to the NASDAQ, we have wicks on the top of these two last four hour candles. As we dive down and we look at the daily chart, notice here's a zone that we've already had mapped out for quite some time. We have other minus development areas that we've mapped out today during the live stream. And at some point we are highly probable going to come back and test those levels. Now when we look at today's volume profile, 5805.50 is going to be value area high. We're going to have the point of control at 5788.50 with value area low being down here at 5773.50. So how do I want to play this? Well, it's going to be very, very simple, all right? As long as we're below this price point right here, I'm automatically going to look to fade down towards 5788. Maybe, maybe front run that a little bit near these candle bodies, which are, are going to come in somewhere in the ballpark of 5792. Now, if we do start breaking above value area high at 5805, then I want to come back over and look at the four hour chart and say, okay, if we're going to go ahead and break above that, where is the next logical target? And if I'm being honest, next logical target is either this swing point right up here, these candle bodies, or right up here, trying to make another new all time high. Now, if you guys like to learn how to place a stop loss order in Ninja Trader and the difference between a stop market order and a stop limit order, make sure to watch this video right here.